Good evening, ladies and lads. Today we are going to be doing something a little bit different from what I usually do. Usually we play around with uh, electronics and the uh, chips programming, things like that. But today I actually wanted to do something a bit different where we instead will be uh, trying to measure gravitational acceleration with nothing but a lock on a spring. The total length of this from top from top to bottom is around 1.17 meters. We are going to measure 10 cycles back and forwards, uh, and we are going to use that to calculate gravitational acceleration. Later throughout the video, I will show you how to derive the equations, and I will show you how to calculate gravitational acceleration. So let's start out by measuring our period. We're going to start at zero, by the way, so... Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. So we're going to use that. We're going to divide the time that that took by ten and calculate gravity. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so now we are going to actually try and calculate gravity using um, a pretty useful equation, uh, which I'll write down right now. The equation is the period. And for those who uh, don't know what period is, period basically means if we think of a pendulum that swings back, and forward, the period is how long it takes for them to go from A to B back to A. So basically, how long it takes to do a full swing. And that is equal to 2 times our happy little friend pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum, which we have right here, divided by gravity. Now, First things first, we are going to substitute an equation back in, and the equation means to substitute these two values. So that will be 2.17 is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the length, 1.17, over g, and we don't know what g is yet. That's what we're trying to find. Now, uh, in order to solve this, we need to do some algebra. So first things first, we'll divide both sides by 2 pi. 2 pi. And if you look here, these two cancel each other out. No more. So... We're just going to do a quick little calculation, which is 2.17 divided by 2 shift pi, which gives us 0. Point, you know, you can look at here, so you know I'm not lying, 0. 0.345 is equal to, and now we don't have a 2 pi here anymore, square root of 1.17 over g. That lovely. Now we're going to square both sides. So we can't just square that side, we need to square both. Now we can just square that. And as you can see, 1.19 times 10 to the negative 1, or as we can write down here, 0 0.119 equal to 1.17 over g. Now we're going to multiply both sides by g, and we get 0 0.119 multiplied by g. And keep in mind, if we multiply both sides by g, the g's over here cancel each other out, just like that. Now, Pretty simple from here. Now we just divide both sides by 0 0.119. And 
we will be on our way to figuring out exactly how much gravity is. We're almost there. So, we now take 1.17 divided by that answer. We get G equal to ooh, 9.8 and uh, we're just going to do a significant figure so that should be 9.81 meters per second squared. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, I did not expect it to be that accurate. And you can check that, you can check the math, I may have made some, you know, silly little mistakes, but that's what we, that's how you calculate gravity. Calculate the length of the pendulum, how long it takes to go back and forwards, and you you got it you got you got a working pendulum you got a very very good way to calculate gravity